right, it is Tuesday night, and that, of course, as always, means another episode of Goal Horns and Fight Songs. I'm Mike, that's Wes, and uh, we're three quarters of the way through our NCHC schedule and rosters. That means we're getting real close to uh, the start of the season. It is almost hockey time. No, I can't wait. Less than a month. Let's go. Tonight, probably, you know, we've had Miami. We've had Omaha. Not necessarily. Omaha surprised us a little bit um, with how excited they got us, um, their roster and their schedule. This is probably the third team that I really didn't want to talk about, and that would be the North Dakota Fighting Hawks. Um, mostly just because I cannot stand their fan base. It is an aggressive one. But, you know, I mean, there's, they get so many compliments about the way they the facilities are up there, and it's pretty much all those folks have to really rest their head on sports-wise. Otherwise, you know, you're rooting for Minnesota teams or Canadian teams if it's the pros. Um, So this is all they have. So let's let them have it, I guess. But, yeah, they could probably tune it down just a skosh. Yeah, I mean, it it really is. There's not a whole lot going on up there. Um, They're kind of stuck in the middle of of nowhere, you and with with Winnipeg getting their team for uh for the NHL after Atlanta moved back up there. You mean moved up there? Yeah, but there's something about Atlanta teams moving to Canadian cities. It's it's great. Uh the um you know, people in in uh Grand Forks, you're either going to be a Jets fan or you're going to be a Wild fan, and I feel like a lot of them are Wild fans. So, um, a lot of Minnesota sports teams. This is kind of the biggest thing that they have in North Dakota, other than NDSU football. Uh, and even so, the people in Grand Forks are not going to cheer for the Bison. That that's that's not going to happen. Um, but before we get started. The NCHC did come out with their uh, preseason poll, and we're going to dive into that in a couple weeks, but looking at it, we don't agree with the majority of it, and yes, we're just two random guys that that love watching the NCHC and, and do a podcast, but... Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll reveal our rankings and show just how much we disagree with where they have teams. I think I figured out I'm about like 50, 50 with it on, but the 50% that I disagree with, I disagree hard. And there's just some that don't make sense to me. And I think we even talked about it the first year we, we did this and probably possibly every year we've done this, but just how much a name can carry a program and mm-hmm. how much credit it gives a program. Uh, I don't know that some of these people are, are really looking at the teams or the information that's available for them to to see on these teams or looking at you know even the schedules or, or the way the games are shaking out before they make these picks. Um, but there, there are some of the people who vote on this stuff are, are very intelligent people and maybe they know something we don't because they're ingrained in it but there's some of this that it's just pure nonsense or throwing darts at a wall and seeing what sticks but yeah we'll get into that actually october 3rd is when we will give our preseason rankings and i will lock in my final ones because i'm still i'm still screwing around with it a little bit but you know i do agree with a few of those picks where i've at least had some of those teams in some of those spots um, along the way here. but Yeah, some of them make <clears throat> sense, but there are some that just, you know, and don't know. And I, I will say just because it was funny, uh, 
Bruce Siski, UMD radio announcer, he retweeted it and uh, or quote tweeted it, I guess, and he goes, I don't know who this was, but it wasn't me for the one first place vote that UMD got, which, you know, I just found that with found that hilarious he he's a realist he is a homer but uh, good for him for uh being realistic <laughs> so i'd be curious to see who votes um because there were i think it was 123 people voted i can think of three of them offhand that i know probably do indeed have votes maybe four uh and that would be bruce uh What's his name? Um, Dave. Dave, oh, Dave Sarman. Uh -huh. Yep. Alex. Yep. And uh, another North Dakota guy whose name is completely missing me, and we've referenced him on this show like 85 times. He's their main source of news coming out of North Dakota. I can't think of his first name. Oh, I know who you're talking about. I got the I got the last two. I cannot remember his first name. I can't think of his name. <laughs> Oh, internet, be kind to me today, please. Brad, Brad Elliott Schlossman. I had the Brad, the Elliot yeah. and the Schlossman. I could not remember his first name was Brad. But those yeah, those are, are at least four that I could think of, um, who are voting. And they're, and he, they're all people that are ingrained in in this. Yeah, they're they they know what they're talking about, and they know a, a hell of a lot more than we. That's for sure. But everyone's entitled to their opinion. And as we may disagree with it, but I don't hold it against them or, or need feel the need to yell at them and tell them that I believe they're wrong. But Yeah, because then as soon as you do, they're going to be proven right, and then you're going to look like even a bigger idiot than you already do. And I will say that my number one team has not wavered, and it is indeed what could be considered a homer pick, but I feel as though I have excellent reasoning behind it so what was i looking for oh that, i was trying to get it to the stupid dang it i got distracted by looking up names of human beings that i know and don't know at the same time so but for those who don't know the nchc preseason poll rankings were the ones the one that i think we can spoil and say that we definitely agree with is number eight being miami I don't think that's going to burst any bubbles to let everybody know that we also have individually Miami in the number eight spot. Oh. Coming in at number seven, a repeat of the last two years is Colorado College. Number six, Omaha. Number five, Minnesota Duluth. Number four, Western Michigan University. Number three, St. Cloud State. Number two, University of North Dakota. And number one, the University of Denver. So... Some of those, I mean, like I said, we'll get into it when we get into it, but it, it there are some that I think are, are strongly in the wrong place based on some of what we've looked into and how I feel about those teams going into this year. And some, it just feels like they're either getting that, that name recognition or they're going off a little too hard off of what they did last year without really potentially putting into context what their schedules are going to look like or how the teams are playing each other in the NCHC and the, really the NCHC schedule that could put some of those positionings at risk. Absolutely. So speaking of NCHC and the number two team, North Dakota is our team tonight. Um, just going down the list alphabetically, University of North Dakota Fighting Hawks, the Fighting Hawks, everyone. The other Hawks. They are, they're not the Black Hawks. Um, they are our team tonight. And they're the other Hawks, both in terms of not being the Black Hawks, even though they try to steal as much as they can from Chicago of the NHL. But also the other Hawks in the conference, as Miami, are the Red Hawks. That is true. And that's how I uh, referred to them in today's tweet, as the other Hawks. And I feel proud of it, because I'm an idiot. Well, everyone knows that. But um, going back to my point, I, th I think as far as a roster goes, 
they might be one of the one of if not the most fascinating team coming in because they basically have a brand new team dude there oh. are so many fresh faces and even like i mean since really the start of the use of the portal north dakota at least three out of the last four years or so has been extremely active if not the most active in the nchc and all of the ncaa as far as i believe this is their second year with so many transfers uh, i believe two years ago they had seven transfer in and they do again this year uh so so they definitely will dip into that resource when and if necessary and that's i i know we've we talked about it a little bit um in in the past episodes it's kind of a dangerous road that that they're playing because they i mean they have was it five freshmen coming six they have seven. they have seven freshmen so very seven much freshmen. like two years ago when they had i believe pretty much the same numbers and they were able to you know tie uh denver for that number one spot and, and earn a split for the penrose cup two seasons ago uh, and make it to the uh, NCAA or the NCHC s- semifinals before losing to Western and then losing in round one of the NCAA tournament to Notre Dame. It's a heavy gamble to have that many fresh faces. I mean, once again, 14 fresh faces. Um, it is Brad Berry's ninth season as the head coach. You know, and there's. Fun fact here, all four of the North Dakota coaches are actually alums of UND, and it might be one of the most um, alumni-heavy coaching staffs. I know Western has two in Pat Fershweiler and J.J. Crew. Uh, technically, I guess three with the goalie coach uh, being Will Massey, who finished his career just a couple years ago or a few years ago with Western Michigan. Um, Denver, you know, Carl played for Denver. Uh, Sandlin went to the University of North Dakota, but coaches at UMD. And he's he's from Hibbing, so that kind of just geographically would have been his team. So I mean, there, there's a lot of NCHC school alums that are coaching their team or coaching in the conference. Because I think a couple guys have, I think the, there might be a coach out in Colorado from, um, Nebraska, I think, played at Nebraska and is now coaching out at one of the Colorado schools. So definitely guys staying within the conference and and moving up in the the hockey world, so to speak, after their playing careers are done. But back to the players. So very active for a North Dakota team. 13 total players took part in the transfer portal, whether it was outgoing or incoming. Uh, Six transferred out, three of those staying in the NCHC. Um, one being, uh, Mateo, Con- nope, that's not the right name. Constantine, yeah. who's coming to Western Michigan. Uh, I believe. Uh, Luke Bass coming, Luke Bass to, coming to UMD. To... And who was the other one? Nick, Nick Ports. Yeah. Going to St. Cloud State. That's right. I had it written down somewhere. I don't remember why I wrote it down, but you know, and then they have seven coming in, two coming from NCHC schools. One being um, Ludwig Person from Miami and an Omaha player. Shoot, what is his name? I wrote it down and I lost it. Uh, Cameron Berg. Yeah. After, I think, two years with Omaha, he's transferring up to North Dakota. So definitely looking at, you know, it's always interesting to see when guys transfer within the conference. In, in that manner, and just how active North Dakota is in the uh, in the portal, both again outgoing and incoming. But let's break down their their players by class. They have seven in- incoming freshmen, seven sophomores, three juniors, four seniors, and five fifth year slash grad students. And they they basically had to rebuild their entire defense core, whether it was because guys aging out or, or signing pro deals. They lost, um, I believe, Tyler Clevin signed with the Ottawa Senators. 
making it like five former North Dakota players who were playing there at the end of the uh, NHL season last year. Basically, the Sens are the Fighting Hawks yeah. of the NHL. That, that's what they are. Um, who else? Chris Jantrick. He graduated. He played one game with the Rochester Americans in the AHL. After playing two seasons with UMD, playing in all 39 games last year, uh, he was four goals, 29 assists, which led the team in assists. And he was the first defenseman to cross the 30-point mark since Christian Wolanin from 2017-2018. And they also lost defenseman Ethan Fersh. Uh, he signed with the San Jose Sharks after four seasons at UMD and played seven games with the Barracudas of the AHL. And even uh, and he led the team in block shots with 71, also put up seven goals, 11 assists for 18 total points. So they lost a lot of production from that back end amongst well, everything else they lost. And then even Brent Johnson, he played 13 games, had six points, but he transferred out, he went to Ohio State. And then Luke Bast, who we, who we just mentioned, um, he had 13 games, he only had three points, but coming to UMD, you know, it's not a ton of games, but that's about half your season that their defensive core was playing. And I think um, some of that might have been lost due to injury because I, if I remember correctly, they were pretty injury riddled last year. Injury riddled. Tyler Clevin kept taking suspensions. Uh, but he was he was trying to do his best Wyatt Kaiser impression. I mean the the back the back end in North Dakota was just not for whatever reason they just couldn't put anything together last year. Uh, they did kind I guess kind of get it going a little bit near the end of the season, but it was not a team that we're used to seeing as far as what we expect out of North Dakota. I mean, they finished sixth in the conference. Uh, they did make it, you know, they played uh, Omaha in the first round of the NCHC playoffs. Uh, they won three, two out of three there to make it to St. Paul or whatever city it's in. Yes, St. Paul. Um, ended up playing... But uh, eventual champions in St. Cloud State. But I mean, like they played well enough in those games, but I mean, it was just, it wasn't what we're used to seeing. And, you know, they, they ended up, lo- they lost a lot of sophomores. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, they could have had 12, a, a sophomore class of 12 kids, but five of them transferred out. You I know, think. Uh, I think the biggest thing that comes to mind for me with their roster is how do you build a program when you lose so many guys? Because because basically you're half you're you're having to re I want to say instill but install this culture is is the best way to put it. You're left with so few leaders that. Yeah, you have this vision for a program, but who's left to actually say like this is what we need to do and help these these kids along, especially with this many freshmen? I mean, they found five leaders because they have one captain and four assistants. All right, it, they do. <laughs> but is that enough? Is is it going to be cohesive enough? Because I that's the part that I struggle with. It's like, yeah, these guys are here, but it's like, okay, well, that's the way you played. This is the way we want to play. And so it's just a cluster. That That's the way that I look at their roster. It's just a, it's a cluster F. I mean, really, the, like I said, the thing they have going for them is the fact that, you know, Bradbury is, seems to be a decent head coach. He has struggled a little bit. He does have a national title, at least as an assistant, if not as a head coach. I think just as an no, he he no as a head coach as a head coach. Oh. It was right after Hextall left. left because it was basically the his team that Hextall team. built. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, he has gotten there. 
the, but the thing with him too is like he was a a major part of a lot of the distractions last year. There was the whole uh was it UND or Nodak jersey thing that popped up and was talked about for a good portion of the year. There was um I think talk of like salary or something. You know, the team didn't play as well as they should have. All of those things kind of coming to a forefront. And when you're the leader of a program with the notoriety that North Dakota has, you got to keep all that stuff in check and it might make, you know, your seat a little bit hotter. I I don't know that he's necessarily in the same position that say Bergeron's at in Miami, but again, like, I mean, going from first to sixth is not a, powerhouse not a good spot to be in no and i think one of the things as we've we've talked about previously is the fact that he keeps bringing in goalies from the transfer portal that's and and especially these last couple years just the kids from the transfer portal i think there's something going on there that um the kids that Hackstoll brought in, they wanted to finish their career at North Dakota. And now these kids that he's recruited, there's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know. But they're like, you know what? It was cool to say that I played for North Dakota, but I kind of want to, I want to move on. And a lot of these, you look at at the kids that are coming in, they're that transferred in. There's two sophomores, but there's four seniors and a junior in person that, well, what they were last year. Uh, or is that what they were? Is it this person? No, person is a senior this year. Yeah, he'll be a senior this year. This will be his senior yeah. season. So you have a lot of older kids coming in, and especially with like Ludwig. Okay, I played at Miami, and yeah, that'd be cool, but I kind of want to have that prestige of North Dakota on my resume. I mean, I just think that Barry is there's something going on in in his coaching and his culture that isn't what North Dakota is supposed to be about. Again, I don't, I don't know because he's shown that he can be successful um he's gotten kids to the national hockey league whether that's because they were scouted beforehand or, or whatever he's he's gotten people to to come over and join the program i mean you brought him up ludwig person transferring from miami university he played three seasons there he's the only goaltender in the nchc who put up 50 or more saves uh, three times. Most recently was against your Bulldogs, where he had 50 saves on 51 shots in a 4-1 Miami lead. He's a seven-time NCHC goaltender of the week, a two-time NCHC goalie of the month. You know, he played 82 games in Miami, 32 in each of the last two seasons, but he has a record of 19-53 and eight. And I mean, I can't say that all of that is him, especially mm-hmm. when you know you're looking at. The kid made 50 saves in a game. He just gets peppered, and he does everything he can to keep his team in a game. But that Miami team was just awful, and I think he was looking for a place that one could show that he is the goaltender that we think he is into a a, a position where he might get a little bit more eyes on him than having to be the best player on a losing team. And and that kind of, I I maybe didn't articulate it as well as I could have, that's the thing. It's like, how much of it is what Coach Barry is saying, you know, to get these kids to come and want to stay there? And yes, he is an older player. And how much of it is, is yeah, it's North Dakota. They're going to look at me more because Miami is terrible. Like, I, yes, I can put up 40, 50 saves every night, but nobody's going to look at me because I'm not getting the wins. Versus, oh, North Dakota, we might get the wins. And, you know, I'm hoping last year was a fluke.
I don't know. I just, I don't have faith in, in what coach Barry is doing. And I really, you know, as much as I love to watch North Dakota lose, hockey's more fun when they're they're prominent and i hope these kids like i hope for his sake and and for these kids sake that they're doing it for the right reasons and he can build that culture back up because it's already beyond the time of Paxtel's kids yeah and and it's not going in the right direction for they do have some positive pieces coming in like we just mentioned one of them the other two that i i would mention are jackson blake He's a sophomore forward. He played in all 39 games as a freshman last year. Led the team in points, 16 goals, 26 assists for 42 points, and was second on second in goals and assists. Uh, was the NCHC Rookie of the Year, which kind of seemed questionable, but I think they based it more on how they played in the conference because uh, really my vote for Rookie of the Year would have been Ryan McAllister. Uh, who may have I mean, barely missed out because of, like I said, I think they went more based on what they did against other conference opponents. But he was on that phenomenal first line for Western Michigan that was you know, getting everybody's best players and still producing no matter what. Um, McCaster, he leaves to, for Florida after one season, so we won't be mentioning him a whole bunch as far as in game speak, but we'll, we'll probably keep an eye on him and see where his career goes and mention him when stuff happens. Um, Good luck to him making that NHL roster and, and producing and competing at the big level. I mean, most likely he'll probably be an AHL guy this year, but definitely going to compete for a spot for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Reese Gaber, senior forward, is coming back as well. He played in 39 games last year, 20 goals, 17 assists, 37 points, and served as an alternate captain last year, but is the captain this year. Yeah, I was going to say, how about you put a little bit of respect on his name and call him Captain Reese Gaber? Because, I mean, he had to beat out four other guys. And, of course, Wes is going to have technical... Yeah, of course you're going to have technical difficulties in the middle of this. It wouldn't be our show if I didn't. Nope. I always have like 12 pairs of headphones sitting around. But I said, as long as you can hear me, I can hear you now. You're good. You need to put a little respect and call him Captain Reese Gaber. And he had to beat out four other players because apparently North Dakota needed to have four assistant captains. Um, And I said he was a captain or the captain this year. Eventually, but you just you needed the lead with that and put the respect on his name. It wasn't a Not bury the out. lead. It was a build up to the big news that he was named captain. But I, um, I don't have time to argue with you today. All right. Uh, I never have time, but I still make time. Uh, the other four assistant captains, though, we we kind of touched on it before, just with the experience. Carson Albrecht, Lewis, uh, Jamernick. Yeah, Marinick, the fifth, which I kind of like. Um, Keaton Pearson, which I really don't like that. Ludwig is pronounced person, and then Keaton Pearson is pronounced Pearson, even though Pearson looks more like person. Uh, and then a name that North Dakota fans will recognize, a last name that North Dakota fans will recognize, uh, Jake Schultz is also, or Schmaltz, not Schultz, Schmaltz is an assistant captain, uh, and I believe he is brothers with Nick Schmaltz, who just graduated probably about four or five years ago now, and has been playing in the NHL. So, names that, uh, names that the fans will recognize and I do think it's a good leadership leadership group I just don't know how much that will help them going forward with as many new faces as they have and you hope it helps a little bit like I said they did have some success the last time they had this much roster turn- turnover 
But last year they dropped off. I don't I don't feel comfortable saying that they're going to repeat what they did two years ago and then looking at their schedule. They have got a meaty schedule with this new team. Yeah, they they are not messing around with this team. And again, to some degree, like I appreciate it and I like it. Because it is not what we've kind of seen from Nebraska Omaha the last couple of years where it seemed like it was a little bit softer of a schedule than it really needed to be. Uh, this one is a, we're hoping to get into the NCAA tournament based on our non-conference schedule. And however we shake out in the conference, we shake out in the conference because if the conference is clicking, anyone in the top four to five can make the tournament. So, yeah, this, uh, this schedule compared to the other five that we've done for non-conference, this might be the most difficult one that we've seen. Um, the, they aren't messing around. Uh, I think, yeah, I think they're going to have the the toughest non-conference. Um, I haven't looked at the other two yet, but they start out October 7th with an exhibition against the Manitoba, I don't even know. Bisons. What. They're the Bisons. I don't know, University of Manitoba Bisons. I was trying to look at the top of their logo oh, here. Gotcha. So they start off with an exhibition uh, October 7th, and then they jump right into a tournament. They they have the icebreaker this year. UMD had it last year, and now North Dakota gets it with uh, Army and Wisconsin. I don't know a whole lot about Army. I think they play... I think they. If, I don't know what conference if they're even in a conference that they would play in. I but, think they're Atlantic Hockey. I think. I know. I think Air Force is Atlantic. I'm not sure about Miami or Army. I I think they both are. Um, it would make sense. You. You keep talking. I'll look that up. Uh, yep, Atlantic Hockey. But you know the military teams, they're, they are well-conditioned teams. They generally play pretty hard. They can steal some wins, especially early in a season. Uh, so I wouldn't put it past it. Uh, it's not a true tournament. It doesn't look like they're going to be playing the winner. So it's just an icebreaker uh, as they have Wisconsin on the schedule October 14th. Or should we say the uh, Minnesota State East Badgers? Yep, Mankato East. As most of the team from Minnesota State has transferred into Wisconsin, including the head coach. They'll be a new look team just as much, if not more so, than the North Dakota Fighting Hawks will be. So they could be a good matchup. Uh, Wisconsin looking to get back into some prominence in the Big Ten and in college hockey in general. Uh, they will stay both at home and in the Big Ten and play last year's national championship runner-up. Minnesota, who is also a new look team, having lost quite a few pieces of that national con- championship contending team. I believe their three biggest players, two of their three biggest players, have since moved on to the NHL. Yes, two of the three favor for the Wild, and uh, I can't remember the kid's name. Cooley? That... Arizona? Is it Cooley that went to Arizona? Yeah, he said he was returning, and then... Yeah. Uh, decided to move on uh so they still have some big names coming back i still think they are going to be a t- looking more into them i think they're going to be a team that's going to be really really tough um before we move on i just want to point out north dakota's schedule on their website why do they have to put presented by it just makes it more difficult, and I absolutely hate it. Uh, because they want you to know all of the money that they take in that pays for their extremely racist uh, arena. Yeah. That was specifically paid for and designed by a guy who wanted so many Indian heads that it would be financially irresponsible to remove them all. Legitimately a quote. I know some of the... I think I'm pretty sure they're relatives, so... But, Not yeah. saying that guy was a good guy. So they, the they want you to 
They want yeah. you to know where all of the money that continues to pay for those Indian heads being in the floor and all across the building and hidden away, uh, who pays to maintain those things. And it is these companies. So, well, that, you know, maybe we can get a sponsorship out of these. Um, I'm going to go with not after what I just said. <laughs> Might have ruined not. that. Uh, so, they have the icebreaker, they have their exhibition, they have the icebreaker tournament at home, they play a series against the Gophers at home, and then they play a new, uh, basically a brand new looking Mankato team at home as well, October 27th and 28th. They really, I mean, as much as... I have no idea. Looking at the schedule, as much as some of these names may scare you, a lot of these teams are new look teams. Like there's a lot of transition <laughs> in this schedule amongst these teams, mm-hmm. which kind of plays into the fact that like North Dakota is a transition team too. I think there's a lot of chance to build some team bonding here and play some extremely tough games. Um, you know, their their first real road trip doesn't come until November, and they go to maybe the most continuous looking team potentially in Boston, Massachusetts or Boston university at Boston mass. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think other than BU when, when they play army, that's going to be the most consistent team consistent team because well, not a lot of kids transferring out of air force or army. They're in there for a reason. Like they go to those schools for a reason. And it's generally oh. not to play hockey, but hockey allows them to do something. Like they are going yes. there to be future war fighters, and it is a mainstay of what they're doing and, and how they do it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they, they, you might, but again, you might think it's an easy that that's an easy win. It's not because that that team is a well conditioned team, and they play a very gritty, hard nosed style of hockey along with Air Force. And Air Force has been a team that has definitely won some games that you may not think they should, or they've competed extremely well. I, I would put Army up there with them. Exactly, I would too. But, um, yeah, back to the schedule. You, Their first road test is at BU, and this is a team, you know, ah, I really know nothing about. I know they struggled last year, and that's a about the extent of my knowledge of them. So they, it's, it's one I of mean, those hockey East matchups that we don't know a, a whole lot about because we don't I, watch. I think they were a final four team, think, weren't they? I think they did make they the, at least uh, I mean they, they did make the tournament. They beat Western in the first round of the tournament. So Western was um but uh Yeah, it, I don't think their overall record was that phenomenal. They're just... Last year, they weren't the BU team that we're used to seeing. Kind of like North Dakota was last year, where we're, it, it wasn't the team that we're used to seeing where they're... Yeah, they were a, a Final Four dog. team. Oh, really? They, they made beat, it that far? They beat Western and Cornell. They lost to Minnesota. So North Dakota is playing the 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 left side of the bracket. The champions from the left side of the bracket. My my face is just more or less trying to process that I'm pretty sure we beat Cornell last year in at least one game. Hey, maybe, but I think Cornell might have been no who. There was a few teams who won their tournament that no one really thought were going to get there. There were some underdog teams in this year's. Uh, NCAA championship tournament for sure. That just makes me feel even worse about the season last year, though. <laughs> well, it should. All right, your season um, sucked last year. Back it, back into it. Um. So after North Dakota starts off with their, uh, I guess technically seven straight home games, go on the road at BU. And then they start off the conference schedule in Duluth 
at my Bulldogs. That should be pretty interesting. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I I really do. It could be a good game. I mean, can Duluth finally figure out you know, the answers to, to Percy now that he's in a new spot? How will he react to the new environment? I mean, he's played at Duluth before, but how will he play with that new team in front of him? Uh, Duluth has struggled against him in the past, only lighting him up once in 51 attempts. So it seems like they're bringing in a heavy hitter to take on the Bulldogs. But yeah, that's how they open up the NCHC season. They do have another non-conference opponent after Thanksgiving in Bemidji State, who they've played more, you know quite a few times. Dude, they literally only have two away series before December. Yeah. Who is scheduling these things? Right. In bet. three in three away series in before the new year. All of twenty twenty three. I mean that last one is at Denver and you know, it's never a joke to go up there. But they do face the under eighteen team again and <laughs> they have lost that game before, but that'll be over the holidays. That's December thirtieth in Grand Forks. I, I... Well, I'm going to go back to the Bemidji one. Um, I am a little surprised that it's not a home and home with Bemidji, but that might be uh, just in the agreement that, you know, they do home one year away the next year. Uh, Bemidji, they're pretty much, Bemidji's the, the grand force of Minnesota. There's not a whole lot there. Uh could get a little rowdy. Don't know what Bemidji is going to have for a team. So that'll be interesting. And then, um, yeah, the the under-18 team, I've, I've never quite understood that because it's... Dude, it's so... It's such a it's weird like game to system. schedule. The fact that you, you have grown men. Grown men. Some of these dudes, 24, 25 years old, going into the season, playing against what will be 16, 17-year-olds under, I would assume, what, college hockey rules? I don't know that they're necessarily Team USA or whatever Hockey USA international and hockey NCAA rules NCAA rules versus USA hockey. Like, <sighs> like, like it's, it's like having your and, first kiss be your be your sister. It's... Dude, it's, it, this game never makes any sense for multiple reasons. First off, again, it's grown-ass men playing children, first and foremost. Second, yes. it's a lose-lose for these college teams. You either beat a yes. team full of children. Yeah, you're trying to knock the rust off and play a game over the holidays. And I think Western plays an exhibition against the Team USA to open the se- to open the season as an exhibition game, and I'm just as least happy about it as I am for it. But I, I much more hate it when it's a mid-season game. Uh, you're playing children. If you win, you beat children. If you lose, you lost to a group of children. Mm-hmm. And so you're either not playing as hard as you should be because they're children, or you're going to play all out and you're just going to smack them. You know, maybe maybe not the goal, may, the Score may not say so, but you're laying bodies on dudes who have not fully developed in pretty much any aspect, physically and or mentally. Yeah, it, it, I kind of understand the concept, kind of, of, of why the U18 team wants to play these games, but why any college, any Division I college, I guess you get an extra would, would you get an extra it. look at potential recruits, but I mean by this time, but maybe you're looking for a diamond in the rough, but you should have guys scouting this team the, long they before should be now. Watching, yeah, they should be knowing. 
the U18 team should be playing D3 colleges if they want to play college teams. Not Western has no business. North Dakota, UMD, St. Cloud, none of these teams have any business playing the U18 team. And I don't know what USA Hockey is paying somebody to get these things scheduled, but there's got to be a lot of money going. There's a lot of money going some way. Yeah, because the, the, you're hurting the kids and you're hurting. Well, you're hurting the kids no matter what team it is. It's it's not gaining anybody anything. It it just isn't. And it, it's the it's the dumbest game that any team can put on the schedule. And you know, maybe somebody can tell me otherwise why there's a good reason, but it's gonna be have to, it's gonna have to be a damn good reason for for me to think otherwise. Uh I just I I don't like that. Um and then, honestly, especially in a in a place like North Dakota, like in Grand Forks, who's really gonna go want to go like spend their night on December thirtieth watching a Division One hockey team play a bunch of kids? Uh, everyone in North Dakota, because there is nothing else going on. Well, they're all drunk. Just saying. You asked who, I gave you a response. That'll wrap up our first segment of goal or post. I think we're both calling this one a post because uh, these games make zero sense. Yeah, it's just dumb. But then, thankfully, they get back into it uh, with, I believe that's their last non-conference. Yeah, yes. Is. Their last non-conference with Alaska Fairbanks. Yes. And then the Nooks. Uh January 5th and 6th in Grand Forks. And Fairbanks for I, I know we've talked about them before um in one of the other schedules. They did pretty well last year uh for being a, a program that was restarted. Dude, they did so great I think, last year. Almost snuck into the NCAA tournament. If a couple of those underdog teams hadn't won their conference tournament, they, I think Alaska definitely would have been in there if all of the teams that needed to win had won. Yeah, I th- I think that's a and taking the uh, the automatic bids had it not come down I, to. Yeah, I I think after. Uh, the other Hawks, as you call them, uh, lose to the the fifteen year olds. Uh, they're gonna be in for a little bit of a rude awakening because, you know, I haven't looked into Fairbanks and who left, who's come in, and whatever. But based off of what they did last year, that's a that's a pretty solid team. Yeah. Then that's a great way to start the second half of the year. I, I this feels like a much better series of games than even just the one against Team USA does to me. I think it's going to be a great way to get started and get going again. It's a, a tough opponent who will show us kind of where uh, North Dakota is sitting at the midway point of the season, and then they jump right back into NCHC play with uh, rival Omaha. And this will be the last season that Omaha is their guaranteed two weekend team going into the 24 25 season when they will start playing Minnesota Duluth and St. Cloud two weekends every year. And those teams will not cycle each other. No, they will not. Or they will no. not be on that, that one weekend cycle. So. And these two teams have always they've always played each other t- tough. I mean, they played each other tough in three season series last year. Uh, North Dakota, I think, I think they split the regular season ones. Uh, North Dakota won the playoff series, go taking it all the way to game three. So I mean, it's a flip flop between those two teams as who's 
really going to come out on top, and it's always a great series and a fun series. And that's who they will also close their season out with at Omaha. But a very home-friendly schedule for North Dakota. I think I counted as like seven away weekends total throughout the entire season. But yeah, there's there's not a lot. There's a lot of green versus. Um, I I think it will help them a little bit. Uh, just towards the end that they're playing Western at home. The only time they're playing Western, but still that you have them at home, but then you have to travel to Omaha. Uh, which, like you said, they always play each other close and always play each other tough. I don't know if I'd be excited about that, that end of the schedule. Yeah, I mean, also, you know, as as well as a person may have played against Minnesota Duluth, he has not played very well against Western. That was kind of starting, that, that was looking like a Colorado College, University of Denver type situation here the last few years. Um, Western getting the better of most, if not all of those exchanges, I think, a game two of the second series last year. So at the end of the season, Miami was finally able to at least earn a shot at a tie in, in overtime and and take a game to overtime. But that was really about as close as it's come in Ludwig's last few games against the Broncos. They were not great outings. So hopefully Western could keep going with that trend and, won't matter what uniform Pearson's wearing, the, the boys are going to find them holes and, and put up some goals. But I think that'll bring us pretty close to the end. I don't have much else. Let's check the fun fact sheet here. Do, do, and see. No, I mean, unless we really want to dive into whether or not Barry's on a hot seat like Bergeron. I, think, I definitely think Bergeron's on a hotter seat if... Barry is at all, but he's been a mainstay around that program that I, I think he he might be able to get away with it for another year or two. Yeah, I think um I think we've hammered on that point enough. So we can just I think we'll just leave it at this. I think Barry's on a hot seat this year, uh depending on where they finish. I think if, this, if they're struggling halfway through the year, then, yeah, he absolutely needs to look out. This heat is definitely beginning to warm up, and it may not all be because of the on-ice product, but that is not helping for sure. So hopefully he can get the off-ice stuff under control, and, and it won't be a distraction. Hopefully guys won't be taking so many penalties that you know they're being suspended for games. Um, and he can get some of that under control. Well, there shouldn't be. They're, they're gone now. <laughs> that's true. But, I mean, he's still producing NHL guys. I know that's not necessarily the, the result that fans necessarily care about. They want to see wins. They want to see championships. But really, this is the next step on a long career for some of these guys. And their goal, the player's goal is to get to the pro ranks. And if you're doing that and you're helping kids and they're, they're succeeding at the next level, I think you're doing a pretty good job as a coach, and he's definitely had had some of that success, and he's won some pen roses and a national title. So, again, he may have some leeway, but I think we're, we're starting to see the kindling be placed in the firebox, and, and we might see some sparks here soon to, to get that fire going. The, the billow is starting to... i got to get my hands up. The billow is starting to go. We're definitely not pouring gas on the fire yet, but we're we're trying to get her going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that'll about do it for this week. Next week we have the St. Cloud State Huskies, the reigning frozen face-off champions who came from, what was it, fourth place to take I mean, the title. <laughs> Come on, you got to do it like Paul Heyman. I don't feel like it today. I'm tired. All right, I had a long day. I had to take animals to defending. vets. I had to pick up babies from daycare. Defending undisputed. Thank you. Frozen face-off champions. Um, 
you know, it's the second year in a row that the team between St. Cloud and Minnesota Duluth goes on to, to who, the winner of that series went on to win the, I don't remember what the Frozen Faceoff trophy is called. I know the Penrose Cup is the regular season trophy. I have no idea what the Frozen Faceoff one's called. It might just be yeah. the Frozen Faceoff trophy. Fuck if I know. Good, good enough. Who cares? Uh, yeah, back to back years that the winner of that series has gone on to win the trophy. So very pivotal series throughout the NCHC season. But I think that'll about do it. I've said that three times now. I'm hitting the old Midwest goodbye. Can we stop doing that? Uh, yeah. View the YouTube things. There's a like, there's a subscribe, there's a share. If you want to feel like doing any of those things, you can. You can also comment down below. You can hit us up at our Gmail account or email that just scrolled by and is finishing up now. There's also a Twitter or X handle, whatever the hell they're called now. Things keep changing. I don't like it. It'll come by after it says welcome. Because that's the next scrolly thing. His personal Twitter handle is below his picture, at Morrow04. Mine is below my picture, at Painted Bronco. Or you can hit up the shows, which is scrolling by in a matter of seconds. Here it comes. There it is. It's at Goalhorns and Fight Song. Or Goalhorn Fight Song. No O's after the word goal. So G O A L H R N F I G H T S N G. And that's on Twitter or X. I'm not changing the scrolly thing, so it still says Twitter. You can suck it. Um, you were fighting me on that a couple weeks ago. I, I told you. I wasn't it's gonna. I wasn't ever gonna change it. I was just telling you that it's called X now because it's still Twitter.com. That hasn't changed. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Uh, and other than that, there's only one thing left to say, and that's pucks on net. Good things happen, like gold horns and fight songs. Until the next episode, we're out of here. Have a good one. Bye.